screen. Okay. I always forget that. Okay, it says we're live. Hello, everyone. Hi. Y'all can see us. Let us know. I always freak out just a little bit that there's going to be a time that no one can see me. I know. It's a totally blank screen. Yes. Oh, there's lots of people here. Yay. Hello, everyone. Okay. That was me. Okay. <laughs> I was like, you're like waiting, waiting. Okay. <laughs> no, sometimes I did it before I hear myself back, but not this time. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. Maya's here. Ashley. Cache. Hey, Cache. Karen's here. Cache is the reason why I read this book. <laughs> yes. Yes, Cache. Wait. Uh, we should say in advance, or I should say now, so Jessica's taking a few mm -hmm. mental health days so she will not be joining us. Um, she's going to post her own review of the book later so that she can talk about it, which I recommend when she does post it that y'all check it out because Becca and I felt very similarly in that this is going to be a gush fest <laughs> when we get to the book club chat time. But I think Jessica had a few more things that she particularly was like not quite as into. Okay. Unfortunately, there is no Jessica here. <laughs> we'll just talk lots of shit and just be like, uh. <laughs> Lizelle's here. Hi, Lizelle. Miguel, Kat, Charlie. All right. Yay. So glad. That's what Cache. <laughs> yes. I know. I, I'm so, it's so funny because I, I know I've said this before, but it was like, I had just had this conversation with Cache and she was talking about this and I was like, this sounds like my kind of book. Like, oh my God, sign me up. So I bought it and then and then you guys announced your book club. And I was just like, what? This is all the NK Jemison vibes in the air. Oh, totally. <laughs> oh, and I started because then I started following her on um on Twitter. Yeah. And uh, and then it just made me like fall in love with her like even more. I'm all like, okay, I love your books. I love you. Oh my God. <laughs> She's the only person that I still like semi regularly check her Twitter for. Like, Absolutely. Because I, I get tired <laughs> with other people, other writers, as we, those who shall not be named. Mm -hmm. It's all like, okay, I just can't. But her, every time I'm all like, Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, Nora. Um, okay, so then the other thing besides the book club chat and the gush fest is that we're going to be talking about co-writing. Yay! So, oh gosh. Becca, I mean, with uh, Henna, like, yes. that's her co-writer, her co-author, so they have some books coming out soon, but, and correct me if I'm wrong, you've done other co-writing. Yeah, I, I've, I mean, because I started out with writing screenplays yeah. and teleplays so that works there's I mean I mean if you think about a tv show it's a group of writers so yeah. it's, it's kind of you're always co co-writing so mm -hmm. for me it wasn't really I never really thought much about it um like as being something different for yeah. for novels but it, it is it's it's a lot different um because I, I had like my writing partner before Hina and still my writing partner, I have a couple of writing partners. Uh, yeah. my, one of my very best friends, Marnie, um, we've known each other. I'm old and we've known each other since I was 19. Um, and so we used to write, like sometimes we'd write uh, screenplays together um, yeah. or teleplays. So we wrote a couple different TV show pilots and things like that. But our writing style is almost identical. So right. like, even when we look back on these things we wrote like 20 years ago, we cannot remember who <laughs> wrote what. <laughs> I was like, I don't know. And so we tried to do a book version of the teleplay that we were writing. And, um, and it's funny because I guarantee you people that have read my books will read her chapters and will be positive that they're my chapters. <laughs> yeah. They're gonna be like, oh, that's that's definitely Becca's chapter. It's like, nope. <laughs> yeah, you are wrong. Well, hi. So, people in the comments, let us know if you've co-written anything before. You're interested in that, but um, do you think that that's better to have a similar style? Like, is it just style-wise that you're the same, or do you have the same like strengths as well? Um. <sighs> I don't know because I feel like it's just different. Like, because yeah. we're picking stories that will that will work with that. Like, like the stories that Marnie and I write are, you know, it's two 
you know, like the one that we were writing was these two young girls in Avalon. Like it's a um, King Arthur Arthurian period kind oh, of. Thing. Yeah. So it's it was the it was called the Priestess of Avalon, and it's just kind of fun because it was just like these two priestesses in training, and then they have to go out to Camelot, and then we had all that you know because Marnie that was actually Marnie's major in college was yeah. Arthurian legends and stuff like that. So she's. You know, she was the expert on that. I'm always like, well, what are they wearing? Um, <laughs> like, you need to you need to edit that part in my part. <laughs> um, but with Hina, you know, we were doing such drastically different characters that it yeah. really played because we are such drastically different. Uh, we have different styles of writing. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of what's been interesting in getting our beta feedback as well, because um, you get some people who are really into the sort of YA style. So if they have any like sort of comments or anything like that, they're usually geared towards, you know, um, uh, more of the, the Hina chapters because she goes into more detail and she's just very much like poetic and whatever. But then you get the other half who are like, oh my God, Hina's chapters are my favorite. And oh my God, this, this, and, this, and they love the detail and the backstory and everything. So it's going to be interesting in terms of people that read it because half of it's a YA sort of novel. Yeah. <laughs> and then the other half is more just like literary fiction. So I don't know. It'll be interesting, but I think it works because one's a three thousand year old vampire and one is a nineteen year old girl. So the characters, yeah, I'm yeah. gonna be so fascinated how y'all like, market that or like how you're like Honestly, We're just marketing it as you know uh, a vampire, vampire like paranormal yeah. fiction. I mean. <laughs> I feel like people will get it because we we do do a prologue, your favorite. Um, but my our prologues are like a page or two, yeah. so you don't have to read too much. Don't worry. Uh, <laughs> and then, um, but then it's like uh, you. It, she always does the prologue, so you. So I feel like people will go, oh, like it gives you that sort of poetic, dark, you know, dark. kind of. Mm -hmm. vibe and then it goes into my chapter which is straight up ya yeah you know? so it's like but, but you at least know <laughs> yeah That's it. i'm so glad lizelle's here who can uh be my fellow <laughs> occasional prologue reader <laughs> i know right i read that on her instagram and i was I'm like come on i was just like yes <laughs> but i do get what you're saying when it's like the 20 page prologues or whatever. I can, I have trouble with those too. So I totally get that. Yeah. Uh, which is why when I do do pro do 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 prologues, <laughs> yeah. they're like a page or two. Cause I do understand that people, I mean, aside from Riser, which I call, called them chapter zero, <laughs> trying to fool you people. It worked. <laughs> I was fooled. I read it. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not calling it a prologue. I'm calling it chapter zero. <laughs> But it, but they are important because they are essentially because, like I said, this started out as a TV pilot riser, yeah. so it was the hook, the first three, yeah. three to five pages of the script. So I just put that in chapter zero as opposed, which is why I didn't think to call it a prologue. I was like, yeah. oh, I can't call it hook. <laughs> I definitely love to read a book. <laughs> that just like keeps the like beats of the story and just calls that for the yeah, chapter. Act one, act two, yeah. act three, act four. Yeah. All right, perfect. <laughs> Clavon says co-writing stresses me out. I'm like, dude, I barely write my own stories. You know, it's weird because it is it stresses me out too because you're constantly wondering if the other person, you know, like like if you find something uh, that you feel like needs to be fixed or or doesn't work for you, and then you're like, oh god, this is gonna be a hard conversation. Um, but it's not stressful in the sense that you're only writing half a book. <laughs> it it moves right? so much faster because. Yes. For me, so I'm writing a, I'm co-writing a story with my friend that I've been writing for forever. This is another like, it's an addendum to the co-writing conversation. But, uh, you know, she and I, we did more upfront work plotting because we had to figure out the story more than I ever personally do. But that was really nice. And then yeah. the people 
writing of it and any revising editing moves so much faster because, or at least the amount of work I'm putting in is so much faster. But I do yeah. agree the stressful part is being like, I have a list of things that you're trying to <laughs> yeah, it's the communication that can be stressful. I mean, luckily with Hannah, um, we communicate really well, but I still get scared because she's like one of my best friends. So it's like, I don't want to like, she doesn't want to hurt my feelings if she has issues and I don't want to hurt her feelings if I have issues. Luckily, we don't really, we didn't really have that many issues. Um, and then when like, if there was something for both of us, we both were pretty like, oh, okay, I can see that. And even though we thought it was going to be this horrible nightmare and it was just going to be, our friendship's going to be over and they're going to hate me or whatever. It never ends up that, that way. And they're like, oh, okay, I can see that. And you're like, oh, really? You can? <laughs> so much better. Yeah. Okay. That's, there's definitely also like a, I mean, you're giving up control of the whole thing. There's some amount of like pick your battle moments where it's mm -hmm. like, I care deeply about this one thing. So yeah. you can have this and I'll like, you know, I may not necessarily agree, but like it's a give and take in some parts. Yeah. I think I was telling you that too. Like my boss, when I worked on uh, Ghost Whisperer, Cause he's like the, you know, you think this guy doesn't need to change anything. He's the creator. He's the head, you know, writer. He's the showrunner. And I was his assistant. And so he was like, he came out of a notes call one time and he just, he said, pick three things. That's it. Pick three things that you don't want to change, that you desperately want to fight for and everything else is fair game. Yeah. And it like always stuck with me. I'm all like, oh, okay. Because then it makes everybody feel satisfied. Like they were heard. Yeah, um, but uh, but you know, but you've just definitely got to keep those, those three things. Yeah, <laughs> that's what Lizelle mentioned. Oh. Control. Mm -hmm. We want to, but I'm such a control freak. Yeah, I I uh, I like collaborating on feedback or ideas, but I need to be doing all the writing itself. You know, again, I don't know if that's because I started in TV and and movies, so it wasn't. It was just never a thing for me. Um, but cause I am a control freak, so mm -hmm. I get it. Like I totally understand the mindset of like, oh my God, I'd have to give up things and you know, and like kind of, yeah. but honestly it's like, I guess it's if you find the right person, those well, kinds of things are not, mm -hmm. don't be eventually, they become fun because then you're like creating this thing together. So I, I get, I get the sort of trepidation of it, yeah. but but it really is a cool experience. So yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Well, and also, and I know I'm pretty sure this is how you've done for most of your co-writing projects, but me and my co-writer split point of view characters. So like mm -hmm. you and do where it's like, so I do have full ownership. Absolutely. To write my character and do all the writing in that way. And yep. in fact, we'll go in each other's chapters and yes. edit bits of our own <laughs> dialogue. Or yes would say and phrase it better so there is still some sense of ownership over something. absolutely yeah i was gonna say that because i i cannot like we both like yeah, right, and I yeah. laugh. i'm like i i cannot write her character lucian for crap like i can't yeah so he has just like this like old voice of like whatever so yeah she would go through my chapters and tweak his dialogue and then she would laugh to me she's like i can't write a 19 year old girl like what the heck it sounds so weird and like oh my god that girl <laughs> so then i would have to go into her chapters and tweak mm -hmm. it so it's funny but yeah no that's exactly so you still do get that feeling of that you exactly that you have control over at least your character yeah. it's just the story stuff that can be it is the story stuff that can be tricky and i've definitely me and my co-writer not why it's on hiatus right now um yeah. But we've had times in the past where there were a couple things that we were like, okay, let's take some time to think about this. Mm -hmm. So it's waiting for basically one or the other to like see it from the other perspective so that we can move on. Because yeah. it, it can be hard at a certain point to move on when y'all are in disagreement over something. I and know. And it's like, did you ever, because I know you had that disagreement where you felt like her chapter made your character, character seem like a jerk and you were like, <laughs> And I, so I told her that and initially she did not understand it all. Okay. So that was one of the reasons that for one draft, we had to wait a little bit longer was because I was like, it's just not working. And so what we did when we first started up again, this time just before COVID. So COVID's kind of 
affected so she's having to work more hours and like right. just not have the mental capacity to work on a creative project right now which is understandable yeah. um and so she understood this time on this reread and i saw in my chapters how i could also tone down my character so that it would okay. so it was kind of like a yeah. we both have ways to do it so my feelings on the reread were correct Right. But there's now stuff to do, not just in her chapters, but mine. Right. You can so, both kind and of. That makes it feel better when it's not just like, you did it wrong. <laughs> like, there's <laughs> things we can improve to fix this issue. So. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking um, of that, that I, I think I've told you, and I think I've said a thing when, when uh, Hina went off outline yeah. <laughs> and she, she killed two main characters. <laughs> and I was like, uh, uh, and it wasn't bad, like it worked. And so I was just like, okay. Um, and she did not get like to first, she was just like, no, I don't, I don't understand why the, like she, like the main character, my character would for, forgive him. And I'm all like, uh, 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 and then we worked it out and it ended up being the entire premise for our third book. So it was like the best off outline choice she ever made. But like you said, we had to take a couple months to percolate and kind of like, cause finally I had, I had put it a comparison to her. I said, it would be like this. And then she was like, Oh crap. Like it, it clicked. And yeah. she was like, yeah, you're right. She would never forgive him. Yeah. And so it ended up, so yeah, the percolation is key. Sometimes even just like when we talk about with like, when you finish a draft of something, sometimes distance, that's what our own stuff. Yeah, we need yeah. the percolation time sometimes. Or when you have your own aha moment mid draft, and you're like, now I can do this whole thing. Like now you have two people that need to have the same aha. I so know. That's so that's the one. But it's yeah. so fun as we're comparing. Yeah. It's so fun. <laughs> oh. Oh, which is thing about Carter. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's fun if you can write the if you can find the right partner. It really is a great experience. I've just heard a lot of nightmare stories of people that have just picked the wrong partners or just on accident thought they'd be great partners and then ended up just clashing. And 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 that's scary when it's a friend because you just don't want it to ruin your friendship. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of interesting stuff that it's kind of like uh, when people recommend you not room with your friends too. Like some people it works great and then other people not so much. So it's definitely, and I feel like there's no good way to know that for certain beforehand. Yeah, exactly. Oh, great. I was saying uh, that was off. She, she's read them. <laughs> so she was like, that was off Aveline. I really love it. It ended up being like a pivotal moment of like the whole series, but it was totally off outline. That was not in the book at all. And it was just because she was just like, well, these characters aren't really doing anything. I'm just going to kill them off. <laughs> and then they end up becoming like, it, like it just, it was, it was, yeah. So it's, it's crazy. And that's where it was really interesting for me to work with a, a pantser, a pantser, because uh, Hina has since, um, since uh, actually since since we started co-writing together, become more of a, a hybrid, you know, mm -hmm. plotting and and pantsing. Um, she because she, she she was just sort of you know more more of a pantser before. Yeah. And then um, but then she really liked. I, I made it very brief too. Like we did the outline. So when we did the outlining process, I didn't want to overwhelm her with this like insane outline. So we just did a couple sentences, you know, per chapter. It was enough for both of us. But then that was the key is that what we had written for her chapter was like a sentence or two. And she got through those two sentences within the first like <laughs> Now what? Yeah. Yeah. And so that was what she did. She just was like, all right, well, I'm just going to keep going and I'm going to kill these two people off and it's going to be great and la la la. And you're just like, oh. but it worked. So it, it was really good learning experience for me too, to like experience mm -hmm. that and then go, okay, we need to re-outline. <laughs> well, and that's why it, it wasn't until you said that, that I realized my own progression from like full pantser to like slightly more of like a middle ground was because I was co-writing and had to come up with like my co-writer goes into detail on like, uh, she like researches names and like the importance behind X and Y and Z. So she needs like an outline and stuff. And so doing that with her 
showed me another way. Right. I'm going like, the system now. I was gonna say, yeah, it's not a complete like I am completely going to be an outliner now, but it it's and for me, it helped me become more of a panster because I saw the sort of like uh kind of what greatness can go. That. Yeah, like, oh wow, you know, and, and I do let myself go when I it's like I if it's not working for me in outline, I, I have gone off outline and then yeah. outline. So it's not like I haven't done that before. But she just, you know, she just has this great sense of like all inside. Like that's why I always say that that about Stephen King where he, he does an outline. And I'm like, I know it's because he just is just see it. it. Yeah. And so some people don't need to outline because they can just see it. They can see yeah. the story as they're writing it. Yeah. I'm so jealous of that. <laughs> I wish I had that. That would save me from a lot of conversion problems. <laughs> I know. That would be so nice. But it's in the middle. Yeah. Uh, I like so Lou Jane asks, would you recommend not co-writing until both you and your partner have experienced writing novels individually, which is interesting. You know, I, I don't know. What about you? Because like, sure. for me, Hina had written Ivory and then I had written my novels. So we did have that experience. Yeah. Um, but I feel like I would have written it with her anyway, even if she hadn't written Ivory. Mm. So my co-writer... Um, has never had never finished a draft before period so she liked writing and she get pretty far but would never actually like do a complete draft so the draft that she wrote with me having someone who had finished stuff yeah for a lot so okay it's like so you know she has experience writing she didn't have experience finishing and yeah. so i think that one you know and i still wrote with her it was still great right. I definitely had to push her a little bit more so that she would like, but so yeah. I think it helps doing the tag team thing, you know, and it just, because you feel like it's not just you, you're doing it, it you're, you know, and I don't know by, it's not pressure. I wouldn't call it pressure, but it's more of just like not wanting to disappoint or just like, you don't be, want to be the one why this doesn't work. <laughs> That's what there's an, yeah. It's a good, it's a motivating pressure. Yeah. yeah. You're like, I have to get my chapters done. And so what I do want to ask besides what play yeah, is interesting. That, um, how did you and Henna um, or you and your other co-writer kind of space out how you wrote? Like once all got the outline, did you write individually or did you like send each other the chapter, read yeah. your chapter? Yeah, that's we had to do it that way, um, mainly because of Henna's um, tendency to you know uh -huh. yeah so but and it also made it fun like less of like a we have to write this book you know it actually became like a really fun experience almost like you know when you used to my friend and I used to do that in high school where we would just write fantasies for each other about mm -hmm. like some actor that we were in love with yeah. um <laughs> you know like and then I went to, and we would do and so it was kind of like that because then and then I would continue the story and then she would continue you know and we kind of mm -hmm. spent the notes back and forth so it was very similar to that where I would write a chapter send it to her she'd read it even though she knew what was going to happen from the yeah. first couple of sentences, some things are obviously surprises because you can't go into that much detail in the outline. So it was like fun for, for us because then when she sent me a chapter, I'd be like, Oh my God, he didn't. And then I could react like my yeah. character could react. So like she thought he was being all smooth in like his first chapter that he was there. And I took it as like, ew. And so when, <laughs> when my character Shay is just like, Ew, does that line even work like in her head? Uh -huh. When Hina read that chapter, she was all like, I thought it was really smooth. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it did work. So it was good because then she could really genuinely react and be like, why why these things aren't working on her? Why aren't they working? You know? And yeah. uh, so I liked that. That's why, so me and my co-writer do the same thing where, well, you know, one person has one week to get their chapter done. They send it to the other, you read, you get another week kind of thing. And that's what, we didn't have any big moments like Hina did where she just ran with the deaths, but we definitely had stuff where we're like, ooh, okay, I can include that little tidbit and like make a callback here that like, you know, so I think there's something fun in that. It feels very immediately rewarding that you have more of the story to read through and again, yeah. progressing faster, yeah. And then you get to write your parts. So exactly, and that's where it feels 
like less of a burden because yeah. holy crap, they just wrote a whole, you know, 4,000 word chapter that I didn't have to write. <laughs> <laughs> this is wonderful. This is amazing. Uh, going back to Clavon Singh, there is, um, I know, why do I forget this? But if Jessica was here, she could tell me what the book was. There is um, a couple books I've read where it's like they did a reimagining of a historical um, event and they told it for, there were three different okay. writers who had different point of views. So that was a try co-writer situation cool like if you can if you have an idea especially even like what we were saying with the different povs like i don't mm -hmm. see why it wouldn't work yeah so maybe i can hire people to do the two other povs for <laughs> I was thinking, I was like you're juggling three so <laughs> well, yeah. I'll write the other two. someone else write them <laughs> i am really curious so it's not co-writing but you know there are some people within especially the self-pub world but they Oh my gosh, Simone, thank you, my lady Jane. That is exactly uh, <laughs> There are some people who like have created the world. So they might've written 10 books in their stories and they it became so popular that now they have people that are like, I, I guess it's kind of like the James Patterson method, but they have people who will write characters set in their world. And I think that's really interesting too, because I'm wondering, you know, how much influence the, like world creator has on the actual book that someone else yeah, I don't know. I mean, that'd be really kind of fun anyway. I mean, it's sort of like fanfic, but like, it's exactly like fan fiction. Yeah. yeah I think, uh, although I think like in some cases, like wheel of time, when Brandon Sanderson took over, it was because, you know, he died. Yeah. But yeah. Other than that, I think it's always interesting. Oh, and <laughs> Kasha is all like, did I hear Shay? Yes. Yeah. Her name is Shay. <laughs> uh, oh, I like Ashley says I shared notebooks with my friend in high school. We'd pass it back and forth. See, yeah. That was what we would do too. It was so much fun because then by the end of it, you have this like crazy adventure with, I'm not even going to tell you because then it really ages me. <laughs> oh, now we need to know. <laughs> what was it? Well, you know, there's probably, there there are a bunch. I liked a lot of people. Okay, Becca. <laughs> you guys don't even know. That's the funniest part. You wouldn't even know who they are. Oh, no. There's a TV show called Young Writers and about the Pony Express, like the first mail system. And uh -huh. it was like a Western kind of thing. And Deidre, hopefully she'll never see this video. Deidre had a crush on uh, an actor named Greg Rainwater. Okay. And I had a, um, a crush on uh, Travis Fine was his name, but I don't think either one of them act anymore. <laughs> so I don't really, unless people are my age, <laughs> like young writers, I don't think anyone's going to know who they are anyway. So it's fine. I don't, but I'm going to look them up after this stream. <laughs> Wait, what is that? Is that true? Is that happening? That's what I can't tell if Cache is saying she's wishing. Oh, she's she wishing to find. But like, I can also see it happening that I, Cache, we're all going to come together for your dream, our dream, collectively. <laughs> we can put it into the universe. Oh. Okay, yeah, she said she's willing it into existence or wishing it into existence. Yes, we will We will add to the wish. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're all here for this. Oh, it's, wait, Ace Pro. Oh, okay. There was a, a Young Writers Associate Society. I was all like, that kind of sounds like Young Writers. It's Young Writers as an R I D E R S. That makes much more sense with the. Yeah. The Pony Express, yeah. I, I realized that, that probably her. But they're, I like the Young Writers Society, but that's cool that they did the different scene by scene with multiple people. Well, that's why I wish I could remember who I was talking to, but they said that they did, um, you know, the forums where you're basically like, not, it's not LARPing. That is not what I mean. I'm, a th I mean, I'm getting a blank. I mean, that kind of, but like, right. um, so they're not acting it out. Yeah, not in my uh, role playing. You're role playing your character. Oh, like, gotcha. Okay. You would be, um, depending on how serious you get into it. But like that, you're also kind of 
co-writing in a sense, yeah. the different role-playing forums and stuff. I would think that if you've done something like that, then co-writing would not be that much of a stretch. I don't think so either. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I That's why I was like, there's gonna be at least one. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, I love that. but I think that's, yeah, and it really is like the step, I mean, it's pretty much co-writing. So yeah. Oh yeah. And, uh, Caro's saying she's done a lot of role-playing and video games. Yeah. I did that. I, yeah. Same. And, or D and D or yeah. So oh, uh, I oh. also do this sometimes depending on like, especially if I need a motion or a facial expression, or like if I'm thinking through dialogue, I'll say it out loud sometimes. I'm like, I look like a crazy person, but. Yeah, but sometimes when you say it out loud, you realize like it doesn't sound like what you thought it would sound yeah. like. Yeah. <laughs> oh. I was just talking to the boyfriend about Gaia online. Yes, me and Lisa. <laughs> Oh, I've never heard of that. Hard same. Tension span was bad and I would just jump off all the time. <laughs> I did uh, Inuyasha. <laughs> I'm just gonna... <laughs> I need Jessica here for this too. <laughs> Inuyasha fan fiction. I know, that's where it's like... Uh, yeah, no, definitely. Oh my gosh, I haven't played in so long. We used to do a weekly thing with, with my friend Marnie, the one, my, one, one of my co-writers. <laughs> Um, but we were doing it uh, through Zoom, um, but we just, we moved and so we just haven't gotten back to it. But mm -hmm. It's so helpful for really getting into the head of a character. Well, that's why I'm curious how many people who play D&D use their actual characters and their stories versus creating a new one and just kind of no. that way. I've never used a D&D &D character in my stories. Yeah. Um, but uh, but it definitely teaches you how to build a character. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah. So oh, you yeah. The same principles when you're, you know, it just is helpful because you don't think about certain things, but, you know, you have to have them for to play the game. So you just sort of like, okay, they have this trait, they have this trait. Okay, they have to take a holy oath. And like, you know, then you can have fun with that. And you're like, okay, what is this? Oh, okay, let's make up some God and like, all right, <laughs> worship so and so. And then it just builds for the game to make it fun and funny or whatever. You're creating these things, but you can really apply that for sure. Yeah. To characters. That's what, um, so my brother David wants to be the DM and start up another new game. And so he's like, the amount of world building even that the DMs have to do and figure everything out and like the history of whatever the setting is. And I'm just like, it's so much it's work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah get the snarkiness right, yeah. exactly. It's all about the snark. <laughs> Oh man. See. I know now I'm all like, what? <laughs> okay, what is Gaia online? You guys have to tell me now. It was this website where it's like it they had all these old school forums and you had your little avatar, and, but it was like it had everything. <laughs> and so like lots of people would post um different individual like role-playing forums i we created a guild like our own little guild oh, and wow. then, like, built up and trade stuff there were like i think little mini games and stuff later it was a very like all-encompassing website oh, how i didn't get into that when was that like well i'm like I was like seventh, eighth grade. How okay, so what year is that? What is that? You were year. I know that's what let me map it back. What year was you in that? <laughs> if I was that was like 2004, 03, 04, 05. Okay, so Maybe, like, I'm pretty sure before that too, but early two thousands, mid two thousands. Yeah. Okay. Okay, guy was two thousand six era. Okay. That makes sense. I wasn't really doing much on the internet back then. They were a place indeed. Yes. <laughs> I never got into the forums. That's what, and I know it's a lot different now. That's what I've heard it. Like, I mean, I heard it went off the rails. <laughs> okay. Me and Lizelle have experienced. <laughs> we are here for it. 
<laughs> there you go. Jenga. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> These are all see young writers. <laughs> That's how you guys feel when I say things like that. I get it now. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> what a time. What a time. Only that me and Maya. Me and Maya. We're like, <laughs> like I get you. I get you. <laughs> oh man. Well, I'm trying to think, does anyone else have any questions about co-writers, co-writing? Becca, could you do you have like what an ideal co-writer would look like for you if you could build up your ideal co-writer? Or is I don't know. Like I, I feel like I've been really lucky because uh, it's been a great experience with both Hannah and Marnie, and I've actually co-written with other people before. Um, but uh, really, it's just about communication, and you can make it if both people are willing to communicate and to, um, I guess take your defenses down, you know, like, like you would with a beta writer, a writer, a beta reader, or like that kind of thing. Like when you're, when you're asking for critique or critique partner. So, you know, you kind of leave yourself open and you're, and you're actually excited to hear the feedback because it, you know, it's going to make your story better. Mm -hmm. If you can get into that frame of mind, then you can really write with anyone. You just have to make sure the other person is like that as well. That's, that's, that can be the tricky part because some people are really defensive and take things personally. Well, that's a good point. Yeah. So I, in some ways I recommend co-writing because it's like, you're going to get to see another writer's like fresh words. I don't know what you want to call them. But it sounds weird. But like, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. And that is a very vulnerable position to be in because I mean, especially when, you know, a set is the outline is, you know, you're still kind of just writing your way through it for the first time. So that can be hard. you got to be willing to share and like also not judge and like all sorts of stuff. So yeah, exactly. it is an interesting experience. Yeah, no, definitely. But yeah, other than that, it's like, you know, it's, uh, it's, if you feel like you have a vibe with somebody and you come up with an idea, it's worth a shot. I mean, the only thing you have to worry about is like, if you have a good friendship with the person, if you, if you're worried about your friendship, mm -hmm being in danger by by doing something like that. And if you're like, if you just, if you're not sure, it's probably better to step back. Yes, yes. Because you just don't want to get, you don't want things to get ugly for, for you know, for no well, reason. Yeah, and I recommend talking about expectations beforehand too. Like I, because there's this weird stage where you start spitballing ideas anyways. Like you don't really just go up to someone and be like, hey, would you like to come with <laughs> No, <after>? yeah. <laughs> you, know, you have an idea and you're like, oh, that would be really cool. But what if this? And like, that's how it starts. But I recommend having a conversation early on enough about being like, how often do we write in this? When do we think X will happen? And like, obviously, again, I've been co-writing the same book with my friend for like, five years now or something so you know it can change but i think it's important to talk about that yeah definitely absolutely um, Ooh, all these comments Quavon says my ideal co-writer would be someone who's honest not too serious and enthusiastic to have fun and collab yeah yeah ne you're right negativity can be a huge like downer but i mean i guess that's kind of true with even if it with with a friend you know what i mean like sometimes you're just like i need a break so you know it's it's uh yeah that's that's a big deal you really want somebody that like i was saying like you that, that can take i mean you don't want to sit there and critique like but but someone that can get excited with you so that you're both super excited about your project yeah says, I think I'm going to make that a 2022 writing goal. Got got friend. <laughs> you got tons of friends. Yes. <laughs> uh, Zanny says, that's what my best friend and I did. We sat down and talked about what we expected and came to a middle agreement. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's definitely communication is key. I feel like in any relationship, that's probably kind of an obvious statement, but yeah. it's, just, uh, but especially with co-writing, you really want to know, manage that before you even start. It is, yeah, and it feels like you're almost entering like a new part of the relationship if you're doing it with a friend. So it's like you have to you have to do it all over again too. Yeah, no, absolutely. 
Absolutely. Oh, people are talking about when they graduated. <laughs> this sometimes makes me feel like I'm old and then sometimes makes me feel like I'm really young. This is weird, like, this is not a... Such an extreme, I know. Yeah. Um, do you think editing takes longer with a co-writer to preserve character voice or shorter, more people working on it? That's interesting. I'd say longer. It's a good question. Um, I mean, mm -hmm. I, I can only go off of what my experience is, in which case I would say longer. But uh, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I don't. No, you'd think that you have more people working on it, but I think that it's also while you're doing less of the work, it feels like sometimes the work takes longer just because you guys are, you have to come to an agreement every time. Like, okay, we both agree that this is as good as we can make it. Let's move on to X or Y or Z kind of thing. Or even when it's something like an easy agree, but the other person has to make the changes, you just don't know what their schedule's like. It could take weeks before it gets back, you know, because they've got a job or they have to do whatever. Like sometimes, you know, even just writing chapters in themselves, it was like, uh, you know, stuff started happening and it would take like a month or more just to write the one chapter. So mm -hmm. Yeah. It can take longer because when you when you're only writing for yourself, you can write the whole only in NaNoWriMo, you can write the whole book in a month, you know. So yeah, I'd say longer just because you can't just rely on yourself. I think it's also one of the few times that you're more aware of how long something is taking. Uh -huh. because it's kind of like the um, we judge others on their actions versus we judge ourselves on our intent or whatever. Like for our own schedule, it's like I know all the reasons this stuff is happening. So I put this on the side and blah, blah, blah. And it never feels like this is really on the side because all this crazy stuff is happening. Yeah. But when I'm ready to work on something and my friends having that happen. I'm like, okay, yeah. <laughs> I can feel the time moving as opposed to when it's me. And stuff. So I, so does it actually take longer or does it just feel, I don't know. Yeah. Well, with Marnie, oh my God, we've been trying to write this book for like, I don't even know. Whereas with, Hina, we, we, like I said, the, the first two books have been published for six years now. So those only took like six months to write between the two of us and then to get it edited and then whatever. So it didn't really take that long for those first two books. But then, like I said, we hired a bad editor the first time around and we kind of got, you know, burned a little bit by just yeah. like... It was really nice. We got great reviews, but they would be like, but there was this typo and this typo. I was like, oh my God, how did we miss that? How did the editor miss that? So we feel yeah. very confident now though, because we hired uh, Enchanted Ink Publishing, which is Natalia Lee's company. And sh and Natalia did it, uh, is doing all three books actually herself. Yeah. And they are, yeah, we got the first one back and we just put in all the edits and stuff. And oh my God, man, we thought it, we thought it was just needed a proofread. Like it was like, oh yeah, we've got that. We already, yeah, we got this. And it was just, she caught so much and it was just, I mean, nothing crazy, but it was just stuff that we missed. Like the car should be here and not here. And this should be this and this, that, you know, and stuff like that. So it, it gave us, and now it's going to give us that confidence that we need, you know, yeah. that it's really yeah. been vetted. It's really been gone through and we don't have to like panic and worry that something was missed, you know? Yeah. Yay. Good. Yay! Um, and I did see Mia had a question she's asked, but um, I think it's the, what do you do when you guys disagree on the plot and have different views of the characters? I mean... Uh, define a lot. Yeah, because the thing is, is that in the third book, um, Hina and I did have some disagreements on certain <laughs> things. Um, but we talked them out and some things I was like, okay, I see what you're saying. And we kept them. And then some things, you know, she did the same. She's like, okay, I see what you said. I'll, I'll cut it, you know? Yeah. Um, so it's, uh, you know, it was, but it was hard because, you know, they're not things like that, like, especially about story and cutting and things like they're not easy conversations. Mm -hmm. Um, they're just not, even if you agree and it's pleasant and you can communicate and whatever. So it just, when you're disagreeing, it's just not, it's, you know, it's never pleasant, but if you guys have that kind of closeness and relationship, then you might just decide you guys can't just 
work it out. You know, you both are just, no, I don't want that. I don't want that. And neither one of you want to compromise. And if that's the case, you just might not want to write with that person. Yeah. That's the other thing. It is okay to realize that y'all have too many disagreements and that that's just not the kind of, this isn't the story or potentially this isn't the relationship that like y'all can have. And that's, that's fine. It sucks. You know, yeah. you wanted something, but that's okay too. It's probably better sometimes. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, Alyssa, yes, it is usually announced in the, like, it'll be announced in um, this chat. Mm -hmm. I don't even know because I'm not a part of it. <laughs> right. That's what, so um, I might message Jess. I'll see if she, she might not get back to me. I'll double check um, if she's cool with me announcing it. Or Alyssa, we often talk about it on our Instagram stories and you'll have, two months to read it so for like this next one it'll be september and october and we'll have the chat in october so okay yes and we're still kind of deciding actually i won't announce it i lied i completely lied we have yeah, okay. it was a surprise yeah. for you. <laughs> we have the book picked but i want to add a short story in there to kind of like switch some stuff up too um so anyways, but since we're going with a spooky theme, since October is when the chat will happen. So we're oh, thinking. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but since we're talking about books and I feel like we've answered most of the co it is time for the Gush Fest to begin. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me what you thought about the fifth season by N.K. Jefferson. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh my God. I, first of all, I absolutely would put this book in my top 10 automatically. Same. Like I, I just, after I read it, I was all like, cause even as I was reading it, I kind of like what you were saying was that the writing itself, not just the story or the characters, which was amazing, but the writing itself was so descriptive, so good, but in a way that was like, I don't, I've just never felt so immersed. Yeah. in that sense. Um, and, and, you know, you know, for me, it's like, th that's my favorite kind of author. That's why I love, that's why I love, um, you know, uh, Brandon Sanderson and like a lot of these other care, a lot of these other writers that give you that immersion. Mm -hmm. and, and she just, I mean, I can't. How does she do it? <laughs> I don't know because Okay, can we spoil? Like, I don't now, know. This is okay. Thank you for saying that. I typed it in the chat, but yes, this, if you have not read the book and you don't like spoilers, you need to leave. This is a yeah, I, we are talking in depth about the book. So, this is your warning. You've had your five seconds. Goodbye. <laughs> now, everyone who wants to talk about the book with all the spoilers. Okay, good. It's like, that's the thing is like the stuff that wowed me the most that made me just like, literally like i was just watching your uh vlog right and i like you just even talk about things i was like Phew, goes like goosebumps 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 just even recalling the moments mm -hmm. i i can't <laughs> i i okay oh and i did end up going back because you're right you have to reread it i i i went back and i reread the whole beginning because I loved that she put in the end that, cause you always, you kind of figured it out that, that, <laughs> the opening that is Alabaster and you're like, okay, he's the guy that caused it. But then I liked at the end where she was just made it clear. I, yeah, I did it. Okay. So that made me want to go back and read it because, and it was so much better. It's like, it's like, it's almost like the second reading is almost like so much better than the first because yeah. Oh my God, because the other part <laughs> that makes it so much better is that remember how at the end of, the, at, oh shoot, I don't know if it's at the end of the book or if it's at the beginning of book two. <laughs> Becca, no. Okay, I'm going to start saying something and then you tell me if you remember this. Okay. So did Alabaster talk about um, that she can pull the the what are those called i can't, can't the 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 o, o, obelisks or obelisks 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 that he that she can that she can pull them 
There was, well, I think they show her pulling it, right? Yeah. <laughs> because in the opening, uh, and the book one, you're fine. Yeah. I was like, okay, 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 good. Because, because with, with, okay, because I'm thinking it's at the end of the book. God, I'm hoping so. And I didn't, I'm not ruining this for anybody who hasn't read the second book. But she, he's, ta uh, Alabaster's talking. Oh, is it too soon? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Okay, I don't know. Yeah. Alex was talking about how it's not just her that can pull, and then it implies that that uh, uh, um, oh, I can't. Uh, Ucha, Ucha is that how you pronounce his name? The little the, her son that was that was uh, her, her husband, right? Yeah. It, yeah. Okay, so it's implied that, mm -hmm. that that he can pull as well. Yeah, because that was one of the reasons they like. Yeah. I'm pretty okay. sure. Oh God! <laughs> I'm like, I remember this. Oh no! Okay. It start kind of. Okay, this is the thing is that when you go back to the beginning, they have it like that. There's like this hunting party, and that they don't notice that the the stone is so close to their town. Yeah. So as before, he was being murdered by his father. He had been pulled. Yes. Yeah. God, but it's in the beginning of the book and it was just like I didn't even I as one of the hunters I didn't even notice this thing either like it didn't mean anything to me at the time because of course why would it you know but then once you read the end and then go oh, thank goodness it is the end and then you go back to the beginning and then I also just wanted to really knowing everything that Alabaster had gone through and where he was to read that beginning again when he actually caused the rift I wanted to read it again because now we know where he's been and like why he did it. And, oh, it just had so much more depth the second time around. Well, that's why, And not only did I want to reread it just generally, but it's like literally as soon as the book ended, I was like, I must read this again. <laughs> it was like an immediate, I need to just experience this again yeah and because even when you kind of like you kind of guess like you were saying in your vlog you do kind of guess that that this is that, that they're all three the same person yeah you're not sure until it's said and then, yeah. but then that makes you want to go back and it makes you want to read it all as her yeah that's what so i had so to start, you always kind of suspect something when there's multiple point of views. So I'm like, okay, they're gonna be connected in some way. Right. They were all, you know, girls, they were all whatever. And I was just like, okay, interesting, but okay, we're gonna go on. And right. so you're suspecting all the while, but she threw me a couple times where like, I thought something and then I was like, oh no. At one point I thought just two of them were the same and one of them was not. Right. And then I was like, why is it friend? I was like, okay, confirmed. We're good. Everything's good. I know. But, I know. Because because Isan, Isan, I'm so sorry if I'm butchering these names, but Isan is so different from, from Cyanite and from from Demaya. So mm -hmm. it's like because they they both have the attitude, the sarcasm, the snark, you know, and both of them, like, well, I guess Demaya doesn't really have that right at no. yeah. But do you see it going there, like mm -hmm. when she's in the fulcrum and 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 yeah. I love Demaya so much. I know it's all the same person, but I <laughs> I just I, and cuz when he like broke her hand, I Okay, I like in my head, like he was dead to me. Like I, I didn't, at any time each was kind to her, and I know you're supposed to sort of feel something. I wanted him to drown and like die and like yeah. I hate him. What's his name again? I think I wrote. I had to write it down because there's so many names. There are uh, Shafa, Shafa, Shafa. Again, I'm probably butchering the names, but Shafa, I hate him. I hate guardians. They should all die. They should all die. They should all. <laughs> <laughs> I oh, uh, and when uh when she first is like in the not the what the barn when she's in the barn and she's yes. like, the and voices she's and she's suspecting and she's nervous and all this stuff and then he's initially she doesn't know to trust him and then he seems kind and then and I like, liked him yes I know and then I was like how dare you <laughs> I know you do not break a child's hand yeah oh my gosh I loved it when he scolded the mom because she was freaking cold 
Oh my god. Well, and that's what makes it cage up so, so great. But it's like you under uh, just the layer she puts into everything. So as much as I hated him, yeah. there was also a lot of being like, I don't want to understand his perspective here. But with his twisted logic, at least it's like at no. least his twisted logic makes sense. And yeah. I follow it. I don't like him, but I follow it, and it's like, oh right. god, no, definitely, definitely. Although, like, and and this hasn't come up yet because I'm only like 20% into the second book, mm -hmm. but the um, the the guardian that they ran into on the coastal city um, was it Al Alia or whatever? I know who you're. Um, yeah. And he was like straight up like freaking evil and just took down Alabaster and then tried to take her down. I was all like, who the like what the? And I know they never really it's not like they never really brought him up because they're guardians, but like, who was he working for? Like, yeah. So it's time to get into my one criticism and we're going to call it that loosely because Becca, when I was telling her, this is absolutely right. This is like par for the course with, um, you know, fantasy trilogies where they're not that the point is that they're setting up the world and they're doing all this, but like there were so many unanswered questions at the end of the first book, like literally all that felt solved to me was that the mystery of how these character point of view characters were interconnected was like, aha, yes. You know, that was the only thing that felt solved. The rest of it is still so open. And I'm right. just like, I want to know. all of it. So you have to think of it in this way. Like yeah. think, just think of an example because a lot even if you haven't read the books, but mm -hmm. it, they're they're very close to the books. If you think about Lord of the Rings, at the end of the first movie or the first book, I mean Pippin and Mary have been taken by orcs. You know, Aragorn, the whole, everyone's spread out, like, like Gandalf is dead. Yeah. Um, but then he comes back as like another, way, you know, and it's like, and then like Frodo and Sam, they're just leaving for their journey. Like they haven't even started. So if you want to know what happens to the ring and the, you know, you're going to have to read all three books, which is why I think eventually they started publishing. Sometimes you can get them published as one book. Mm. You can't read one alone without reading the others. It will make no sense. It's not a full story. Yeah. And I'm I completely understand. And it's but I am also like in my heart of hearts, I want all of the answers now. <laughs> so I'm just like, I want to know everything. And which is a good thing. Like yeah. she, got, she hooked me. I'm like sucked in. So I can't wait. And this is one of those things that I actually like I know like Hugo Awards and like oh my god hey Jemison and all this stuff but it's not as popular as I want it to be and I feel like if this had been like coming out not now but like if it was as popular as I wanted it to be it was coming out now this is the kind of thing that like I could be talking to your friends about and like speculating I don't about. understand how it didn't get like insanely popular like this book is is better or as like than than any Brandon Sanderson book, and he, every one of his books ends up being like huge, and everyone talks about it. And I and you know I love him, but this book is like, I mean, my mind like blew up like physically. Yeah, that's what. Oh, and again, I tell everybody about it. Like every human I know, the same way that I do Lord Kings. Like I'm all like, read this book read this, now, yeah. now, now. You must read this book now. But her yeah. command of like of words of the English language of everything is so great. There were so many times that I like I took pictures of where I was at at parts because I thought this single sentence yeah. was so good. Like there were some times where it's like you're feeling all this way, you're following all these characters, and she'd get me with like all this stuff is building and you almost don't realize it's building, and then she'll hit you with one line and move on. But that one line, I have to go back and reread, and I'm like crying now. And I'm like, what did this happen? The first, the first part of the book when when Ucha was killed, I was. So sad. Yeah, I could not stop crying. Like through her like numbness and, and pain and whatever. It was just like I I could not like like she made me feel like I had just walked in and saw my son 
being torn to pieces. Now, I wasn't sure when I read the first book if the husband actually did it. Like in my mind, I was thinking, did he? Because why would he take the daughter then? Like maybe someone else did it and he was afraid for his daughter and that's why he took her. But they pretty much settle it in book two. <laughs> You're like, it's, it's done. <laughs> Um, spoiler, it's him. Uh, well, at least so far, who knows? Like, she, she's not like a person yet at all. But, but back to what uh, Cachet was saying on the previous comment, too, about the allegory like, that was something that really hit me, I think, mid book, where I was like, whoa, like, I didn't like it's so subtle. The, the the but it's but it's so powerful when you when you make the connection you yeah. know you're just like whoa like to do that in such a brilliant way that you can almost like people that maybe don't understand you know you can show them in a fictional way of of how it feels so that you're on you know what I mean like it, it was just it's God. That's what I think the magic of fiction is and can be, is like ex exploring these things in a different world so that people who couldn't ever understand them can see it here, understand it, and then reevaluate. Like, and yes. it does it so beautifully. And I just, ugh, and you're so sucked in. But, um, oh my God. <laughs> Uh, I'm really trying to think of what kind of like bag I can make for it. <laughs> you know, I really love a book when I can like I have to try and think of like make like an obelisk bag. You need an obelisk, yes. <laughs> That's it. Honest, you know, it's just <laughs> and Cache, like they, yeah, they did. They all won Hugo's, and she's talked about it in a lot of spheres. But it's like I feel like not that I'm like the general consumer, but I kind of feel like I'm the general consumer usually. And I didn't really hear much about it until I, if I went through a specific like fantasy book forums, I'd see her mentioned right alongside Brandon Sanderson as like, you know, the best, like they're like, these two are the ones. And I'm like, okay. Um, but I don't see her in like the general, I feel like the general public, there's not as much. Yeah. And I feel like that's what I want it to be. Like, I'm it's telling you, yeah, that's the thing is like the, like the, like a lot of my, you know, friends and family that I normally recommend books to and that, you know, I was like, oh, you have to read Wave Kings or whatever. And they all did. And then um, I'm telling them about, uh, you know, Fifth Season and they've never heard of it. And I, and honestly, Cache, I hadn't heard of it until you brought it up to me. And it was just like, and when you started talking about it, I was like, this sounds like absolutely like a book that I'm going to freaking love. Like, it sounds like my cup of tea, like over and over again. And then it was like, not only that, but like now is one of my top 10 books of all time. Well, and even, yes, agree with that top 10. Like it's phenomenal because it's every part of the book that I love, not just the yeah. story, but also the writing, like everything the world building how it sucks you in the character growth and like everything is amazing and i've talked about my love of alabaster in the video i posted but like it's all so good. and so and i just i'd, I'd heard of nk jemison like i've talked about it before but yeah. a patron for a while i really like her yeah I just had not read the book because it's like i don't know why the series from other it didn't stick out as much when i talked to people about it so i was just was a dummy and never picked it up and then yeah. finally and i was like oh, i'm sad i waited so long but i'm happy i get to experience it now <laughs> yes oh my god yeah i think lazelle was saying um that it's supposed to be made into a tv show and once that happens yeah she that, will exactly i think it still is like she just was talking on her twitter that pretty much everything she has now has been optioned in one way or another so I don't know if it'll be TV, but it'll be a movie or something. Like, I feel like it would be better as a TV show because we could really explore the characters and get into it. But this is the golden age of TV, though, right? Like, this I, is I want it to be a TV show so bad. Adaptations. Yeah. But they're making, like, Way of Kings should also be a TV show and they're making it a movie. So it might be a movie, but yeah exactly I, it's, she literally had every single one of her properties i mean yeah if i had any like buying power for anything <laughs> i would be like that too so I, i'm so excited yeah see then get get in early read it now before it becomes 
Although I do feel like yeah, Game of Thrones was like that. It wasn't it wasn't that he like I had never really heard of it until the TV show. So it's yeah. true. Usually yeah. like the TV show makes everybody like, oh, what's this? You know? Mm -hmm. Everyone yeah. was the book. That is exactly. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh my god. Like, oh, like I don't even dream that far. <laughs> like I could never. I know. Oh, I should read that quote, though, speaking of which. Please do. Yes. So Becca's a genius and found okay. <laughs> Well, no, it's at the end of the book, but I, I just, it's, uh, it's you know, one of the, you know, when she does the acknowledgments and stuff like that, but it was, it was on the Kindle version. So I don't know if it's on, it probably is on the paperback too. I don't know. But anyway, it, it, it hit me at such the perfect time because as you guys know, I've been taking a hiatus this whole month because I was just feeling like everything that I was writing was just crap. And I was just feeling really down about everything. And so, okay, this is what she wrote. And I'm just like, it literally made me cry. I was like, yes. Um, she said, the Broken Earth trilogy is the most challenging work I've ever written. And at certain points during the fifth season, the task seemed so overwhelming that I thought about quitting. Actually, I believe my exact words were delete this hot mess, hack Dropbox to get the backups there, drop my laptop off a cliff, drive over it with a car, set fire to both, then use a backhoe to bury the evidence. Do you need a special license to drive a backhoe? <laughs> and it's just like the fact that she wanted to destroy the fifth season, thought it was awful and wanted to just like set fire to all of it. First of all, it makes my heart hurt. <laughs> like the fact that we wouldn't have had the opportunity to read this story. So it's it just, it's like, and she's so amazing. The fact that she felt that way about something so amazing, it just makes you sit back and realize that we are our worst critic and don't give up. <laughs> yeah, that's what, if Anne Kay freaking Jemison feels this way. God. <laughs> the way that I feel this way sometimes too. <laughs> like, oh, oh, I mean, it just it really hit me. Like it came at the perfect moment mm -hmm. when I was just like, I needed to hear this. This is amazing. Yeah, yeah. But, oh my God, yeah. I just, and what's crazy about her and the way that she world, you know, built this world, that it's our world. Okay, first of all, I want to actually ask everybody, I want to ask you, what do you, because I haven't, I haven't read all the books. I'm sure if you've read all three books, you probably already know the answer to this. But right now, we're, we don't know what the obelisks are. Um, and in the beginning, when you reread it, like if you read the opening, they sort of like, at first I thought she was, since they were floating, I thought they were like satellites, since you could tell it was like our world or whatever. Uh -huh. And now we know that's obviously not it, because they're rocks you know but i'm just curious what do you think what do you think they are i don't know i definitely thought they were satellites for like Initially, right i thought they were satellites for longer than that but yeah i'm with i mean i say longer than that like at least 75 percent of the book like i was like oh that's what the obelisk is well except that it was when it was when like she when they went to the the Alia, the coastal town, and and there was a dead stone eater in it. Like that's what, and you realize it's a giant stone. That's when I was all like, "Oh, these aren't these aren't satellites. These are giant freaking stones." But I still don't know what they are. I'm sure they tell us. But no, so do, are, do you have any other guesses? What do you have any other guesses? Oh, any other no, I, don't, I really don't know. I mean, that's why I'm like so curious and excited because. <laughs> Yeah, um, I like not knowing. I do like it when you can't predict everything. You know, like for me, I hate it when I can predict everything and I know everything. You know what I mean? She's really kept enough mystery that you're just like, I need to know what's going to happen. That's what there's so much mystery. <laughs> that's okay. I feel Lizelle says I can barely remember what they are and I read all three. But I had no idea what they were when I was reading. I had zero guesses. Yeah. Yeah. When she, when she talked about the stone eater, my mind was still satellite, but like a little bit more covered in stone. Like I, don't, I thought it was like, I don't know, like a calcification process or something. Okay. Um, yeah, to me then at that point, I just imagined this giant like geo stone that the stone eater got stuck in and died. The way it's described is closer to what you're saying, but I was just like... <laughs> You're like, eh, it still sounds like. 
<laughs> Who knows? I did like, um, I went back to the appendices and reread through some of that. And I just oh. love how thorough it is while like just being glossed over casually in the book, like talking about some of the other seasons and stuff. And I was yeah. Like, God, how does one person's brain think up this much of stuff? <laughs> I'm still kind of stuck on that where I'm like, oh my God, how does someone do this? Well, this is interesting actually, because if you read the that end thing that I was talking about, she said that most of these ideas came to her when she um, went to this, like, I don't know, it was a conference or something in at NASA. And they were talking about all the different ways that like, different futures of what could happen if this happened, like with the ice caps melting and whatever. And so she she said she attributes a lot of the ideas and so the world that came up with um, to this NASA trip. So it was really interesting because they were talking about like more of the geodes and, and things mm -hmm. like that. So yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm, she's amazing. Yeah. Hi Jessica, by the way. Also. Oh, yeah, Jessica. Oh, the absence of the moon. Yeah, because the book ends with, you know, do you know what the moon is or whatever? Like you're yeah. like, wait, hey, what's happening? Yeah. Um, I am with Lizelle on this one and that like, when I think back on stories that I've loved, what I remember the most and could talk to someone about post reading is the character progression. Yeah. Um, yeah. But while reading, there's just so much going on that, but yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, same. Oh my gosh. Oh, how did you feel about, um, oh, I know I've already started. I'm like 20% in. I need to like sit down. I haven't had time to actually like sit down and read. I've just been reading before I go to bed. Yeah. Um, so I haven't been able to get that far, but I need to like just sit down and just finish the series because okay. I have to know what happens. That's what, let me tell you, doing a 24 hour read a thought of it was the best decision I made. I'm going to say, yeah, maybe just do two more of those. It literally was like, it is, I think it's one of the few books I could genuinely do that anymore with. Like, I, we're going to get into She Who Shall Not Be Named. But I, you know, growing up with Harry Potter, that's what I did. And yeah. this is the closest I can get to that phenomenon for me as like right. a experience. Yes. I picked it up and I did not want to put it down. Yes. And I just like kept going. At no point did I get like a little bit tired. I think I read until like two in the morning and I was just like, I have to know. Time was not, time didn't exist anymore. It was just me and the fish. <laughs> You're not tired at all. You're just like, I'm up, I'm up, I'm up. Let's do this. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Oh God. It was so good. What did you think of, um... oh, okay. I got to get his name. I'm terrible with names. So I had to write them down. Um, of Inan, they're the lover of Alabaster and oh, okay, I liked all of that. Yeah, I would not have predicted that's where it was gonna go. Oh, me either. Like, I was not expecting them to be on an island. It was such a great, like, kind of uh, curve, was what it felt at the end. Yeah. But I was just like, hell yeah, we're just like, I loved that relationship between all of them. You, because you felt like they had, like Alabaster and Cyanide had a bond though, because of their situation and the way they were sort of forced to be together, they could never really like each other or or, or understand each other. And and I liked that, but then I loved how Inan brought the two like together. Yeah. And then it was totally wonderful that the three of them were just together. And like, then it all worked. Yeah. And it, it felt more like um, minus Enin, they had a mutual respect for each other toward the end, but not a liking necessarily of the Right. Person. And then Enin came in and it was like they got to see, th yeah. there was like a love and appreciation even through him, but with him. And like the whole thing was. It was really beautiful. I know, and it was so freaking sad. And I blame oh. Shafa. <laughs> I hate him. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It, was, it felt so. I should have known that something terrible inevitably. Guardians was. with their stupid boats. I and it's just like it's like the fact that Alabaster could do what he could even with the guardians on the boat. Yeah. Like, oh man. I love Alabaster so much. I know. That's what. Yeah. 
So but cool. I also love that I really truly believe, I mean, I don't know where it's going. Like I said, I haven't finished the whole series, but I love that, that um, Isun or Cyanide or whichever you want to call her, that she, I think she's like as powerful. She just doesn't have that same confidence or whatever that Al I mean not that Alabuster has like confidence, but it's just like I believe that she's as powerful as a ten ringer. I just don't think she believes in her power enough to be that yet. And maybe that's where it ends up. I don't know. But Yeah. Well that's why it kind of felt like not that she was holding herself back, but that yeah, she definitely felt I think she is as powerful also. And, yeah. you know, when they were talking about the rings at the end, oh my God, how beautiful was it when he gave her the ring? Like, oh, the two rings. I was like, oh, she's like, what are these? Like, I don't need these. And it's all like, but you earned them. It's like, oh, yeah. they're understanding. Yeah. And this was so beautiful being co-parents and just, oh, so sad. Da, 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 da. I get yeah. it. Oh, I'm crying um, yeah. Oh. But at the same time, you understand it. What would they have done with that child? Koru or Cora? I can't remember. I, don't remember. I have it written down. Hang on. <laughs> um, Koru. What would they have done with Koru if they had gotten a hold of him? I mean, it was horrible what happened that she essentially suffocated him. But what would have Shafa done with that child? I mean, they wanted that child. They, they wanted, wanted it. A yeah. tender and cyanite combination. Like... They want it. Oh. oh, all the things with Alabaster's kids and like the contraptions, oh. they have and all this stuff. And I was just like, the drop in my heart when I realized, like, because you realize not only what's happening and that's terrible. And then when it's the levels of like it's hit, and then you're just like, and oh. just I felt like I kept dropping. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh. no. And it's interesting actually that you brought that up because. He says that he'll, you know, even though you know he still kind of loves her, he said that he'll never forgive her for Koru. Mm -hmm. But he, I mean, he kind of said that when they went to that first, you know, station where his child was was gone, and and he said that it was a better life. He's he was he was like relieved that that child was gone as opposed to the life that he had been living. It wasn't a life. Yeah. So I'm hoping that he forgives her for Koru because what would they have done with Koru, man? They would have done the same thing or worse. Oh, it's horrible. Yeah. I, this is the, uh, going back to like the three of them, but also just generally in this book, the relationships that were shown in this book are yeah. relationships that I don't often see, but felt the most realistic in some ways in the exploration of all of that. And I was like, wow, it feels like actual humans. And yeah. And that's why I'm also thinking that he will also, or the forgiveness will look a different kind of way. Yeah, it's almost like I feel like he has. Like he says that because he has to. Yeah. But like I feel like the way that he's still even treating her at the end, that mm -hmm. that it's just they have that bond that I just don't think that they well, can't be. I mean, how can you compare it to anything else? You know? They've been through so much and oh. It's so real. I think that's the thing that's like the best part of this book is that when I remember scenes, I remember them like they happened, like they're memories. Yeah. That's what, no, it, oh my God. The characters have felt so realistic. Yeah. That like, I, like, even like when the, like when they were, again, I always bring up Alia, but that, that coastal town, like when that guardian was coming up to them and he just drops Alistair, like I remember that and then she drops and then you're just like, and then she doesn't know what to do and she ends up just freaking making a volcano with the obelisk. It's like, it is so vivid in my head, that scene that I, it's like, I remember it like it was either like it happened or like I saw it on a TV show or a movie. Well, that was my biggest thing when I was reading the prologue, the prologues that I don't usually read. But it's like I immediately felt like I was in the story, like that I was there. So it's like I was being told the story, but I was also there. It yeah. was 
such a weirdly unique, amazing quality to the writing that transported you fully. Like, do you think a lot of that was because a lot of it was in second person, where by constantly having the reminder that it's you, you are doing these things, you are doing these things. Like it's, I think by reading that over and over and over again, it really sunk in that it was me. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. like you don't think about it much when it's like a choose your own adventure because it's all like, oh, turn to page so and so. It's more like a you know, Google yeah. and whatever, but this was so intense mm -hmm. and so like, so story and character involved that you're so in it by, by reading the language of you, 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 I don't know, man, I think it put a whole extra level to make it real for me. Like, I, I think that was like a brilliant choice and it's, you're right. I, I don't see it that often. No, that's it. I, never read a novel with that before. me either aside from choose your own adventure yeah, yeah. yeah but man it was so good and I even loved all of the the characters are so vivid to me I was yeah. thinking back to the researcher character that joined um her in the, the one scene. Name I didn't write down <laughs> But it's like, I have such a vivid mental picture and she feels very real to me. And yeah. she like was barely in it compared to okay. other characters. You know what I'm saying? But I'm like, no, she's real. She's a real person. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Cause we haven't even talked about, um, uh, I have to look up the name cause you know, I'm terrible with names. Um, uh, Hoa. Hoa. Mm. What is Hoa? Is he an, a, a stone eater or is he? Because I think he said kind of the implied at the end that he's an actual like obelisk, but like a human form of one. Yeah. Kind of implied that, right? Yeah. I He's definitely more than just a stone eater. Like, yeah. Because he kept saying when they were talking about the obelisk, he's like, it's me. It's me. And I was like, what do you mean it's me? Are you one? Like, are you a human? Like, what's happening? <laughs> why I want to reread it so bad because at, is it the if it's not the prologue it's like the first chapter but we see the um small not the boy but yes the, but that was Ucha's I just want to see it well because that's why I'm wondering if he's not like some form of I don't know I don't oh, know Ucha? there's so much I don't know I just want to I need to reread it <laughs> okay he was a stone eater for sure. Oh, is he not also like a little bit more? Okay, like but they said he wasn't. Like yeah. literally at the end of the book, they he, they said he wasn't quite a stone eater. So why, okay. did, why did she say that? <laughs> like, see, this is the kind of like, if I want it to be the cultural phenomenon where if it was coming out now. I know, there'd be all these oh, theories. Yeah. Like, you don't know. Like, this is, I'm going to suck. Uh, I need to reread it because I'm just, I need to. Mm. Ooh, Jessica said speculation is that Hoa is a stone eater, but also a reincarnation of Koru because Koru was from a 10 ringer and essentially a seven ringer, which I really think is a 10 ringer, two 10 ringers, I, in yeah. my opinion. That I can see. Ooh, okay. But, but, but Cache saying that Hoa is just a stone eater. So he just must be a special stone eater, like a super powerful stone eater. Or is Cache faking us out because she knows- I that know! Cache, what game are you playing? Are you telling us the truth? I know, because actually um, the, the, the kid that I used to babysit, who's now not a kid, he's like 30, but <laughs> he's the one who got me into, um, into Brandon Sanderson. And so I was reading the second- uh book in the in the after way of kings and um there's something that happened in it and i had to call him up i'm like if this person is dead for real like i'm not reading the rest of this book like i'm not and he's like no they're dead and i'm all like no and he's like he's like you really should finish but yeah they're dead and i'm like okay so i started reading it liar <laughs> Oh, I appreciate that. I'm like, how did you? Why did you do that to me? But it actually made it better. I'm glad you did because then when when they were alive, I was like crying and like, I it. That's what I'm gonna have to text you after this where I'm at and um the well of ascension. I know, right? Oh my god.
Um, yeah, I don't know if there's a, I mean, I feel like there is a bond between the stone eaters and the obelisk, right? They're kind of implying that. Oh, I think they're definitely, I yeah, I think yeah. A bond between a lot more stuff and I'm just kind of, I just need to finish to figure yeah, out. Yeah, I know, I know. Cause they're bringing up the moon at the end and I'm all like, okay. Um, I think like Jessica was saying earlier, it has to have some sort of part. And of course, everyone who's already read the trilogy is probably laughing at us right now. Cause they're like, ha ha ha, I know what happens. <laughs> um, oh. Yeah, I know. Honestly, we should probably have a like uh, redo of this after we've read the whole trilogy. <laughs> well, you know what? If you know what, yeah, let's. It's we like we read a third of the story. Like it really is like Lord of the Rings. It's like having a discussion about like fellowship, where it's like great, even totally. I mean, it's so good, and you can talk about those things. But we have not dropped the ring yeah. corridor yet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's what we'll have to do. Like a whole. I'm sure we could bring Calvinist trilogy. Let's discuss. <laughs> like, gosh, hey, Lizelle, everyone who's read it, let's just all jump on a stream and just discuss. <laughs> yes, so we will have a, a a gush fest, and then we can finally like. Because the thing is, is that I do feel like I'm like half guessing because some of these oh. questions. That we're asking could absolutely already be answered. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, no, I 100% feel like because I just after what the Hugh goes right. I'm sure she answers this in full. And I, I know every question that I must have right now will be answered in such a great way, and I just need to know. I know. Oh my god, it's so true. Um, but yeah, it's it's one of those it's just one of those things that it's one of those books and book series that i feel like only comes around very very rarely like, yeah. like the, the fact that we are still talking about lord of the rings you know like there there are certain series in life where they will be talked about forever and i really feel like broken earth is one of those series or one of those trilogies yeah and and I just I I can't honestly and, and this is the thing is I can't wait for it to become even though I, I I feel like the books will nothing will be better than the books ever, but I cannot wait for it to be either a TV show or movie so that more people can read it and yeah. know the story whether it's only in in TV form or not. Yeah, because it's just it's so good and it's just and it feels like that's the only way that you can really get that stuff out. Yeah. And, the, and whoever made that point earlier is so right. Like it is, it, you're just waiting for it to be turned into something for the masses. Yes. Yeah, and I'm usually part of the masses. So this is not like a ringing on people who don't read books or something, but like yes. read it and for it to be the cultural phenomenon, it does require some amount of movie or TV show now it feels so. And it, yeah. it has to be like, it has, it will be, it will be. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm actually now I want to do research on who has the license because that all depends on, you know, there are people that I like and there are people that I don't. <laughs> you know what? We'll have our gush fest and then you can tell us after what you've researched and then we can all just kind of be like, <laughs> okay, we're in the clear, we're in the clear, so-and-so yeah. has it. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, there are certain people that I'm like, I do not want them to come near this with a 10 foot pole. <laughs> um, no. Yeah, I, I just, I wasn't expect, I mean, I was expecting it to be good because like I said, Cache was like, this is her favorite series. So I'm like, okay, this is going to be good. Like this mm -hmm. is, I, this is going to be good. Yeah. But then like, I just was not expecting it to be just to literally sail, boom, right up to my top 10. Like, yeah. Yeah. no, that's why. And it's like, and because I'd heard mostly like the Hugo Awards and like, yeah, and I'm like it, it something has to be phenomenal. So knowing that and still being like the hype was not enough. <laughs> no, how is that possible? I don't know who could have hyped it up. Like, I don't even know if past me watching this stream and us casually gushing would prepare me for I for what I was about to like read. It's so so good. Like you don't know it until you read it. And it, you know, I mean it, like any book or anything, you know, it's not for everybody. But yeah. um oh get, well, speaking of which, yes. Well, that's um, I, but yeah, but you, you but again exactly this. You can't like there's no denying that this book is 
well written, well thought out, like everything. So it's just, I know. Oh my God. <laughs> well, you know, you've already started something, Cache, because I'm already going to be diving deep into everything that NK Gem. That's what I did with Brandon Sanderson. Like, I read Way of Kings and then literally went broke because I didn't realize he wrote like 18,000 books. Mm. But um, but between like birthdays, or, you know, Amazon, because I have everything on my on my Kindle. Mm. Uh, so I bought every book he ever wrote. <laughs> and one fell swoop. You're just like, Why? And it took me a couple of years, but I read <laughs> all of them. And that is about to happen. <laughs> with Miss Jemison. Oh my God. That is happening. Especially reading more about her too. Like I said, like reading that quote, it really hit me hard. Like, yeah. And that's, I, oh my gosh. Uh, not to be all, everyone should be her patron on Patreon, but she does do live streams where she talks about writing and like her books and everything. Oh, so I'm definitely going to be Patreon. Yeah. Patreon, 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 a patron on Patreon. <laughs> oh man. Um, okay. Well, I think Becca and I have successfully gushed as much as we can without freaking out about what's to come next. I know. To be continued. To be continued. To be continued. So that's what we will follow up once we are done with the trilogy. <laughs> And we'll just have another gush fest. Thank All you. the spoilers, it's happening. <laughs> um, but thank you guys so much for joining us. Yes. Oh my God. Thank you, Becca, for being here to chat oh, about co writing. And that's what uh, Jess and I will announce the um, book club pick soon, along with the short story uh, that we're going to choose soon as well. So, yeah, thanks, guys. And we will see you next time. Bye.